And so the next time somebody says, oh, they put those big wheels on the car to make it look better, that's just a side effect. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Fred's Full Throttle. It's been a busy week since my last video, so we're gonna get right into it. So as always with a lot of my C8 Z06 videos, I wanted to start with a couple cars that were spotted out and about in the last week or so. So for the first one, I wanna credit Dan, Danny Jackson on Facebook. He spotted a C8 Z06 out doing testing in Michigan during a snowstorm. Now what's cool about this is it shows that Chevy is fully testing the car and treating it just like any other production automobile they would make, regardless of the fact that it is generally not gonna be driven in the winter. It gives you a good sense of how thorough they're being with the car, and that should you actually need to drive it in the winter, you'll be able to, though hopefully it won't come to that. With the wide tires and the low profile tread, generally I would imagine this car isn't great in the snow, but it's doable if you really needed to in a pinch. All right, so the next set of photos is actually some of the best photos we've seen of any Z06 is spotted kind of out in the wild yet. Credit goes to Matthew Harker on Facebook. So last week, while I was in the middle of editing the video that had the old Torch Red photos, these photos came out and they're much better. Matt happened to be driving by a parking area where there was a car carrier with a bunch of regular C8 Corvettes on it, but then on the back, there were actually two Z06s. There was a silver up top and then a Torch Red down on the bottom. Now what's notable about this is it was broad daylight and he was able to get right up close to the cars and take a bunch of really good photos. Credit to him for taking the photos and sharing them with everybody. Now there are two points that stand out about this Torch Red car. Probably the most obvious and interesting thing is that the car itself has the carbon flash wheels. They're the carbon fiber wheels, but they're painted in carbon flash metallic, which is something that we knew was coming, but we hadn't actually seen in person, or at least I haven't seen any photos of it. It gives you an option if you decided you don't like the raw carbon look. And then the second point is that you get a really good look at the brackets. There's two of them on the back of the car that are what are going to eventually hold the big wing. And the reason I'm pretty sure that this is for the high spoiler is because on the front of the car, you can see the dive planes on the corners. And though they haven't attached it yet, you can see where they're going to include the lip spoiler on the front, and it just gives you a good sense of how it's gonna be attached to the car. All right, so moving on, one of the very common questions that you'll see in any of the online forums or Facebook groups is people asking, how can I get a C8 Z06 as fast as possible? And today I have an answer. The only little downside is it's probably gonna cost you a couple million dollars. Credit to Stephen J. Gahn on Facebook for posting this, but Barrett Jackson has announced that they're gonna be auctioning off the very first production C8 Z06 at one of their car auctions on January 29th, which is only two weeks away. They say that at approximately 8.30 p.m. is when the auction will be up for bid. It's lot 3009, and it looks like it's gonna be preceded by a couple other special Corvettes, a couple other C8s, but then that's gonna be probably the headline of the show is the first production C8 Z06. Now, as is the case with a lot of these auctions for a first production car, the car that they're gonna show is likely not to be an actual production car since at that point production won't have started. Instead, it'll probably be one of the press fleet that has been floating around at various events and that by winning that bid, you are actually gonna to get to be able to spec the car the way you want in the color, with the options, all of those things. There's a lot of speculation online that Rick Hendrick, who's a NASCAR team owner is going to probably try to win this car. You may remember that he bought the very first C8 Stingray Corvette at a princely sum of $3 million, but it remains to be seen how many other potential bidders there are. And most importantly, this is actually a charity event. All the proceeds from selling the car are gonna to go to Operation Homefront, which provides financial and housing needs for those who are affected by 9-11, as well as for military families and veterans, and I think it's a fantastic cause. So if you're gonna spend three or $4 million on a Corvette, you couldn't do it in a better way. All right, so let's put our engineering hats on for a second, and I wanna talk a little bit about the wheels on the C8 Z06. Several of the conversations I've seen talking about the increase in diameter for the wheels have had people saying that the reason that they're making the wheels bigger is for aesthetics, and certainly aesthetics is a side effect of this, but there's actually a really good reason that they're making the diameter of the wheels larger. It's not for looks, it's actually to elongate the contact patch on the ground, that interface between the tire and the pavement. The larger the diameter of the wheel, the longer the contact patch for a tire gets. Directly from Aaron Link, the lead development engineer for the C8 Corvette, he says that the reason that they decided to go with a larger diameter wheel is so that they could elongate the contact patch and get better acceleration. The wider width of the tires, which are also sort of a, a trademark of Corvette as he mentions, and the functional improvement there is that it improves lateral grip for the car, but for acceleration, the lengthening of the contact patch is actually the best way to get better grip, and so the way that you do that is by making the wheels larger. We've seen Ferrari, Porsche, and many other brands have have slowly been ratcheting up the size of the wheels that they use. And a lot 
lot of people think that it does look better, which I tend to agree as well. But ultimately for a lot of these cars, it's actually to improve the performance in a straight line. Per an article from Road and Track, and I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit here, but with all other factors remaining constant, the only way to elongate the contact patch for a wheel is to increase the diameter of the wheel or the tire. I thought that was pretty interesting, and to be honest, I didn't know this until I looked it up, but I did a fair amount of looking online, and sure enough, that's actually true. And so the next time somebody says, oh, they put those big wheels on the car to make it look better, that's just a side effect. It's actually for better performance. And especially having the mid-engine platform, that's giving you more weight over those tires to give you even better grip. All right, so moving right along, I wanna talk about the production dates for the C8 Corvette. As I said, there was a whole lot of news that happened last week, and per a Corvette blogger who cites a memo that was sent out to dealerships, Chevy has said that they're gonna start production on May 9th of the 2023 model year cars. That's only three days after the 2022 production cycle ends. Normally, there's a two-week period between between the end of one production cycle and the start of the next one. However, with all the demand and interest in the 2023 cars, it appears Chevy is not resting on their laurels and wants to get right into the production as soon as they can. I think this is a good move and I think everybody's gonna be really excited to see how this goes. Now, additionally to this, some of the other information that Chevy provided to dealers was that the dealer order guide is gonna become available on March 21st. And then three days later on March 24th, the order entry system will open up so that dealerships can start placing orders for their allocations. So all of this is started building building that momentum of getting the order sheets, getting the orders placed, and then production starting soon thereafter. It means the car is no longer distant on the horizon. We're getting a lot closer. So I'm very excited about that. All right, so last and probably the most exciting from all of this is that right as I was at the end of editing last week's video, Chevy dropped a new video about the C8 Z06. Titled The World, it focused very heavily on the testing and performance aspect of the Z06. They opened with scenes from the Nürburgring and Circuit de Sarth, which is where the 24 Hours of Le Mans takes place every year. And then they had Aaron Link and Oliver Gavin talking about the car, talking about their performance, and talking about what the Nürburgring means and what setting a good lap there takes. The video itself features a lot of footage that looks like it was probably filmed at the same time as the original unveiling video, but with much more of a track focus. There's some great footage of the car driving both on the track as well as in and out of the testing garages where they were doing the tuning of the car. And then a key thing I noticed was that as Aaron was heading out in full race gear, Oliver came over to the window and told him good luck, which reading between the lines definitely seems like Chevy's going to have an official Nürburgring time for this car. And I wouldn't be shocked if it's very close to that seven minute barrier. Maybe Maybe even a little bit under, which is why Chevy is reiterating the message that they're taking on the world with this car. I covered the perspective Nürburgring times in a previous video, which I'll link in the description. I wouldn't be surprised if they set something pretty amazing. All right, if you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be doing a lot of C8 Z06 content going forward as I look forward to receiving my own C8 Z06. So thanks for watching and until next time, Fred out.